Hey, it's Jack. Thanks for watching. How are you guys doing today? Today we're doing a therapeutic art activity called abstract emotion tracking. It combines the benefits of emotion tracking and art making. So those of you who are new, I'm a therapeutic arts facilitator. What I do on my channel is I facilitate therapeutic experiences and insights through art making. Um, I like to do different arts and crafts activities, so if that's something that you're into, subscribe! So to do this activity with me, you just need some paper or a canvas and pens or paints, whichever you prefer to use. And you just want to take a second to look inward and reflect on what your current state of being is right now and any emotions that you might be dealing with today and try to pick out like the most prevalent one and channel that into a little doodle or a mini painting. Emotion tracking is a really basic and useful activity um, in therapy and art therapy because it helps you first and foremost to identify your emotions and to learn to name your more complex emotions and what those feel like inside of your body and doing it every day naming those emotions every day will help you notice like patterns over time and can help you identify triggers or causes for certain like emotions which is really useful in owning our experience and to feel like we have more control over our internal experiences and our reactions to things. And when you combine it with art making, it can help you better regulate those emotions. And art making also actually activates the reward centers in our brain. And so it calms us down. It helps us to feel good at the end of the day. It interrupts any like anxious thinking and helps us to regulate our anxiety and our emotions better. Sometimes when we have something like a panic attack or an anxiety attack, it feels like it comes out of nowhere, but in reality, it's like a slow buildup of anxiety and dysregulation over time until it reaches a point where we tip over the edge. And so art making every single day combined with emotion tracking, helps us to regulate so that there's not that slow buildup of anxiety or negative feelings over time, so that we're less likely to reach these like big moments of dysregulation or reactivity. Also, um, art making at the end of the day can be really helpful in combating dissociation and shutdown. A lot of us dissociate and shut down without knowing that's what we're doing. It's a product of the freeze response of our like fight, flight, and freeze survival instinct. So if we're like at work all day or at school all day, we're picking up on these little stressors and they compile and it can trigger our fight or flight or freeze response which manifests as like dissociation or shutdown, which leads to isolation, isolation away from ourself, from our own feelings, from our own internal feelings, isolation from our environment and from our community, like our friends and family. So like a lot of people at the end of the day, after an overwhelming day, they'll go on social media and they'll scroll or they'll watch TV those things like take us outside of our physical experience so we're we become disconnected from what's happening around us we become disconnected from our community and from our own personal feelings and experiences and as a pattern like over time long term this is unhealthy because these are things that we need a connection to in order to feel whole and fulfilled. Like we don't truly exist in isolation. We need to have a connection to our internal experiences, to our body's experiences. We need a connection to the environment around us. We need a connection to our community in order to be like a whole and fulfilled person. And so when we're too much in our freeze response, when we're too dysregulated, 
and it leads to a pattern of shutdown. It actually is like making things worse, even though in the moment it might make you feel better. It also helps, like it also prevents us from effectively responding to these stressors. Like we can't just like close our eyes and disconnect from them and then they'll cease to exist. Like we have to face those things and have control and structure over our lives in order to really like own our experiences. So anyway, art making and emotion tracking at the end of the day, like if you want to scroll on social media, like social media, it can be a really great tool in community building. Like I know I've connected with people on social media that I wouldn't meet in my normal everyday life that really make me fulfilled and really give me like a different sense of community. But that's different from like mindlessly just scrolling and getting like a bunch of stimuli from like a bunch of 10 second clips over and over again. So, but if you like do some kind of art activity or just like sit down and doodle before you go on social media, it'll help you reach a regulated state so that you're not doing things from a place of shutdown and dissociation. You are calming your nervous system and owning your experience and pulling yourself back into your body aside from like activating those like reward centers in our brain art making engages our mind and body and it also can help us attain a flow state which is something that people try to reach in meditation or mindfulness the flow state is when you're like completely immersed in the moment and you can let go of like mental distractions of things that have happened in the past or things that you wish would happen in the future or just like daydreams. You're like totally immersed in what's happening right in front of you in a connected way. Like you are aware of what's happening in your body and you're aware of what's happening around you and you're engaged. And it also gives us those like healthy chemicals of like dopamine and serotonin and endorphins from like the reward centers that it's activating. So that's kind of like the science behind how art making is like regulating and is a healthier version of like things that we would seek out that disconnect us but that feel like really rewarding in the moment like scrolling on social media or like watching tv and things like that that bring us like outside of ourselves it helps us like stay inside of ourselves, but it also triggers those like reward responses so there's this term it's called I, i'm so bad at like pronouncing things but there's this term called alexithemia which means it's like um it's like a state of being where you're so disconnected from your body's experiences that it becomes really difficult to identify emotions or to even notice like when we're having emotional responses and to be able to like identify more subtle and complex emotions so just like as a side note while you're like reflecting on your state of being for like material to like sketch or paint if you have if you look online and you have like an emotion wheel it can be really helpful a really helpful tool in identifying those like more subtle and complex emotions like we know of the basic ones like anger, sadness, happiness, anxiousness, but like what about when we're feeling disillusioned? Like that's like a feeling that happens when you think things are one way and then you get some new information that alters your perception of the way things are. I, I struggle with alexithemia a lot because I'm autistic and so if you're neurodivergent, alexithemia is like more common in neurodivergent populations. So it's something that we naturally struggle with and have struggled with almost since childhood. But you can also develop alexithemia if you have a history of like eating disorders or if you have CPTSD or PTSD, like if something traumatic happens, it can dissociate you to a point where you lose connection with yourself and you lose the ability to identify emotions and your state of being and eds like we're when you have an ed you're like training yourself 
to disconnect from your body's responses. And so a like side effect, another like effect of that would be alexithemia where you also lose the connection to your emotions. And so there are like a lot of things in life that can lead to that like level of dissociation. But emotion tracking through art making can bring you back into that state a little bit every day and can train you back into like noticing your state of being because even though you're dissociated from it and you don't experience it on like a conscious level those things are affecting you on a physical level whether you have awareness of it or not so it's actually really disempowering to have a disconnection from your emotional experiences even though it might make you feel like oh i'm just like a not reactive person i just like am not affected by things like i feel like masculinity is also tied to alexithemia like men are trained over time to have such a disconnect from their emotions that they're like oh well we're just not emotional people but that's not true it, you're just not aware of it which means you have less control and less autonomy in your emotional experience so it's actually a disempowering thing to have such a dissociation from your emotions that you no longer consciously are experiencing them because regardless you're physically experiencing them so i myself did this activity i did emotion tracking through art making for like a week and it was really helpful in me identifying like those more subtle and complex emotions that i didn't even know were like possibly compiling or like distorting the ways that i perceive certain things like like i had kind of like a a difficult or like deep conversation with somebody on the phone and they said something that it took my brain a while but like later on in the night after i didn't even realize i had been dysregulated for like hours and that dysregulation was like compiling an emotional state that i was like disconnected from later on in the middle of the night my brain was like analyzing that thing and misconstruing what they were saying but because i was like doing this activity i was cultivating like more awareness of my emotional state and so i could kind of see what was happening and reverse that like reactivity if that makes sense rather than what would happen like naturally which is like i misconstrue something because i'm like compiling a subtle emotion and then that amplifies that emotion which leads to more misunderstandings and then i can like construct a whole idea about how something is going which isn't like grounded in objective truth it's just like more of a reaction to a more subtle feeling that has been compiling because of dysregulation i hope you guys do this activity yourself even like one time or for a week and let me know how you feel or what like experiences you have something also like I think it's a result of capitalism but being like so work heavy as a culture when we're at work we have to like be on we have to like be our work persona we can't like let things get to us and but instead of shaking those things off we're pushing them down and so we're building up all these little stressors without even noticing it while at the same time being encouraged to dissociate from that state of being and so i feel like doing this activity like right after work or right after school can be really beneficial in like reversing that process so instead of like pushing things down like you have been all day you can have like a moment like 10 minutes or half an hour to bring those things back up to the surface in a controlled way where the art making is like helping regulate you and activate the parts of your brain that release like calming chemicals so that you don't like just feel like a really big reaction so that you can look at those things and look at those stressors and face them in like a healthy way before you go home and like just crash out and relax so that way you're not like carrying them into the next day subconsciously and then compiling them over time to where it could create like panic attacks or anxiety attacks or like things that are a lot harder to break down and 
change in just like a week. So yeah, again, if you want to do this activity with me, um, you just need a paper or a canvas. What I did was I took like a sketchbook that I have and I ripped a paper out and then I cut it into fourths. So the like canvas that I'm working with is just one fourth the size of a regular piece of paper and get pens or paint, whatever you prefer to use and just like reflect for a moment on your current state of being and try to tune into like those more subtle feelings as well and maybe reference or use like an emotion wheel to name them and channel that into like a sketch or a painting to help regulate those emotions and create more depth of your insights. And it just takes like 10 minutes or maybe half an hour. Then see how like your state of being shifts. See if you feel more calm or if you feel more joy or more hopeful. Just see what comes up. And if you do this for like a week or like consistently, you can start to notice like changes in your state of being overall. And then let me know what your experience was like in the comments and connect with me. I'd love to hear what it was like for you or if you liked this activity or if you hated it and it was horrible. <laughs> um, let me know. And thanks for watching, guys. Um, I do these therapeutic art activities. I try to do them once a week. So if that's something that you're interested in, subscribe. And I hope you have a great day, a great rest of your week. And I'll see you later. Bye.